go there, go there. Think about what's the worst that can happen. Mm -hmm. If it's anything less than death, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> if you won't die, then just go. Like there's <laughs> nothing, like that's okay. There's nothing really that bad that can happen. Yeah. You can't bounce back from, you know? Welcome to the Holistic Nutrition Hub podcast. Today, we're sitting down with Anna Gala of Sit With Anna. She's a soulful business coach who helps impact-driven sister soulpreneurs and coaches build a boss mindset, attract dream clients, and earn more income-changing lives so that they can posit positively impact the world with their gifts while living a life full of freedom, fulfillment, abundance, and joy. So thanks for being here, Anna. Hi, you're welcome. So happy to be here. Yeah. So I fell upon your Instagram a while ago and I reached out because I absolutely loved what your, your message was and what you were putting out there. It completely resonated with me as somebody who really thinks mindset is important, not only in our practice. Um, so this podcast again is about nutritionists. And so it's super important in our practice when we're dealing with clients, but also in mindset for business. So, um, like I mentioned in our little chat prior to the show, we're just going to fly by the seat of our pants and <laughs> see what comes out there. Um, Love it. So really what I would like to start with is just if you could share a little bit about who you are, what's a sister soulpreneur? I said that right, right? Sister. Sister. Sister soulpreneur. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a little bit about yourself. Um, and we'll start off like that. Yeah. So my name is Anna Gala, and like you said, I'm a soulful business coach, and my focus is helping, you know, soulpreneurs, coaches, impact-driven experts that really are on a mission to share their light and their gifts with the world and impact their clients and the world really in a positive way. And my role in all of that is to not only give them the strategy, because we all know we need, you know, there's some steps to take in order to build a successful biz, but really a big emphasis on our mindset, our level of belief, you know, our understanding of our feelings and, you know, energetic capacity and really working through some of the programming that has, you know, been put into place after many, many years and learning how to have a greater level of awareness around them so that as we build and grow our business, we're also building and growing, you know, on a personal development side as well, because I really, truly believe that without one, without the mindset and the, you know, the energetics and the point of attraction and all that fun, magical stuff, you can't get to the level of success that you want to in your business. They have to both grow at the same time if you want to have sustainable success. So that's what I do. And a sister, <laughs> so this is some fun verbiage that you know, kind of got downloaded to me a little while ago. I used to always call, you know, the women in my tribe sisters because I just really loved that connective piece. And then it transitioned into sister as it's almost a permission slip for them to see their light and to, for them to see their magic and to give themselves permission to shine. Absolutely. And me seeing that in them. As well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so can you just explain a little bit about how you transitioned into this? Because I know that you were in corporate before, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I was definitely, I didn't hold jobs for very long. Like there were like, you know, maybe a year, two years until I was like, Ugh, this is brutal. I'm leaving. And my last job was for seven and a half years, which was a very big milestone for me, considering <laughs> that I never held jobs for very long. But it was for um, the company Tom's, mm -hmm. the shoe company, which a lot of us know is the one for one company that with every pair of shoes that was bought, a pair of shoes was um, given to a child in need around the world. So that really resonated with me, especially because I was really always in the mindset, even from, you know, student council from high school, I was one of those nerds. And, you know, hosting events that had a give back element to it. And so that really landed with me and I was able to feel really fulfilled for a long time in that job. And even near the end, I was still loved the job. I loved my boss. I loved my coworkers. I love that I got to travel all the time. And so, you know, getting the courage to actually leave a job that I really did enjoy to shift into 
you know, more of an impact driven business on my own was a big deal. And for me, it was definitely it stemmed from, I mean, the origin point was an anxiety attack that happened. And that prompted me into my self-development journey, which then, you know, many years later after that, I decided to, after falling in love with meditation, I decided to get my meditation teacher training and then started just, you know, that's when the Sit With Anna brand started and really just speaking to people who were working through anxiety and really demystifying meditation. So that's where it all started, you know, almost seven years ago now or six years ago now. And then as it was shifting, as I was growing and developing, you know, more of the mindset piece came in and the self-empowerment piece came in and the reprogramming the mind. And I really fell in love with all of those teachings and continued, you know, learning and getting courses or certifications. And then as it was starting to build and become successful and about three years in, I left my job. So it's been just over three years now that other female entrepreneurs started reaching out to me and just asking me like, how am I doing this? Or do you have any tips or asking me questions or asking me for coffee or like those types of things at the beginning? I was like, okay, this seems to be nudging me in a certain direction. And it's not until I worked with a coach a couple of years ago that through some, you know, some niche work, I realized that what I got most excited about was working with other fellow, you know, female entrepreneurs. And that's when I really turned and pivoted my entire business to focus solely on like-minded, soul-driven entrepreneurs that want to make an impact in the world. And me being able to help them do that was like, you know, helped me feel like my impact was exponential because now I was helping the helpers. And that felt really good to me. So, I mean, that's how I got into where I am now. And just something just really clicked within myself and within my business and within my level of inspiration and alignment that this is exactly where I was meant to be. And realizing how good at it I was, you know, (laughs) and when, when you're doing something that you were meant to do, it just, you get the divine downloads and the intuitive guidance and you get really excited and hungry to learn more. And yeah, so that's where... That's That's where it all started. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? I think that's one of the reasons that your story snagged me off of Instagram, because I feel like it's very similar to my own and very similar to many other entrepreneurs who are quote unquote doing well in the business, you know, whether it's as a coach or a nutritionist or a fitness professional. um, What I tend to see is people are like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. And they've often gotten into this for their own healing, their own journey. And I try and link up with my coaching clients anyways, try and link up, you know, why they first got into this in the first place. You know, like you said it very clearly, I had an anxiety attack and that's Mm -hmm. what drove you into this. And then from there, all the mindset pieces and the meditation, the intuitive guidance, that's how we do it, right? Like we're just so connected with ourselves. And so I think that's honestly what snagged, snagged me on, on yours because I was like, yes, she's doing it. And I was super <laughs> stoked. I'm like, oh, there's more than one of us, you know, like, <laughs> oh, thank God, you know, like, or whoever you, you look to. Um, yeah. But anyways, so most, like I said, most get into this. And one of the posts that you had on there um, was your non-strategy tips for the soul, like a soulful biz and life. Mm -hmm. And so 12 non-strategy. Okay. So I want you to define what a strategy is versus a (laughs) non-strategy. Yeah. I mean, there's so much emphasis on the steps and the strategies and the tactics and the techniques and like, and that's all well and good. And I, obviously that's necessary. You need to know how to get from point A to point B in a more linear fashion than like, I'm going to try every single freebie I find. And I'm going to do like, you know, all the things and Google. And I mean, which, Hey, like I found a lot of things out that way as well. But when we have a clear strategy, we can obviously get from point A to point B, you know, we can collapse time and get there a little quicker. But in the non-strategy strategy, it's more introspective. It's, the, it's looking at the human being rather than the human doing. And it's like, who am I in this space? How do I feel? What are my thoughts about myself, about my potential, about my worth, 
about my capabilities. How smart am I? How worthy am I? How it's all of these things that really are the starting point of the creation process. And so really learning to go inwards and understand that you need to nurture yourself on all levels and make sure that you're feeling good and having fun and have a high level of belief that you're even capable of doing the damn thing. <laughs> because if you're just like forcing and pushing and it's more of that, you know, divine masculine energy of the action taker, the goal chaser, the, the doer. And if you're so focused in that space, then one, you're going to burn out pretty quickly because you're not taking good care of yourself on, on all levels, but you're going to have a weight, you know, to put it in, in, a, in a visual way, you're going to have a weight that's holding you down from really getting up to the level that you want to. And that weight is limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that weight is, you know, you not feeling motivated or your energy levels being, being low or, you know, you feeling like, you know, imposter syndrome and like, you know, all of the things that we all go through <laughs> at varying degree with at varying degrees. And so when we lean into the space of the non-strategy strategy, we are able to up level ourselves as a human being and get ourselves to an energetic match point to that, which we are trying so freaking hard to <laughs> achieve. And so we get there with a little bit more flow, more ease and more fun when we nurture ourselves as well. For sure. Yeah. I, I, I often say that it's business is really simple. Like it is really simple and that people who have this imposter syndrome and you can, you can tell me whether you agree or not. People who have this imposter syndrome tend to, like you say, have limiting beliefs that hold them back. And so they think that they're not capable of coaching or they're not capable of starting a business. But in reality, if, if the strategies out there on the internet, for instance, or you found a business coach or whatever, and you're still not, like you said, doing the thing, you know, is it the fact that you don't know anything or is it the fact that you just have to get started and figure out who you are in this and what you want to do and all of those things. And that leads down to, you know, knowing your niche, right? Like how do you figure out your niche if you don't know who you are? Um, and then also the colors in your business, your logo, all of those things around it. I think those are the minutia really, but you know, like, how do you even get started if you're not looking at yourself? And so the 12 non strategies, I absolutely love it, <laughs> you know, because number one, so I've got them all written down here for us, but number one was get clear on your goals. So do you want to just talk a little bit about each one of these as I go through yeah. them? Yeah. So number one, I tried to like kind of reorganize your Instagram post so that it was in order, <laughs> but then I gave up. And so we're going to mishmash. <laughs> Sounds good. So get clear on your goals. Um, how long did it take you to get clear on your goals? Was it like when you started working with your business coach or, you know, years after you started your business? I'm still getting clear on my goals. A hundred percent. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like that's because they're going to change. Yeah. As you reach them, you're going to have then different goals. And so my initial goal was leave corporate, be able to get that same income. That's it. I just wanted to be able to get the same that I was getting on my paycheck, which I mean, wasn't a ton at the time. It was not the highest goal, but that was a great place for me to start. I'm like, I just want to be able to support myself and my desire to travel and like, you know, live abroad while running my own business. That was my initial goal. I just want to do that. But I will preface this goal conversation with, if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Mm -hmm. It's like just driving around aimlessly without having something put into your GPS. Yeah. And so of course our goals are going to change, but if we want to get clear on, and goals are interesting because they're not just external goals. So if I want to get clear on my goals, I can't just say, I want to make X amount of dollars a month. Like that's my goal. Full stop. What is my goal feeling? What is my goal lifestyle? What are my goal relationships? What are my, you know, I mean like, what is my goal physical state, mental state, emotional state, spiritual state, and getting clear on the full picture and the full spectrum of 
a goal life versus a goal income. Because yes, obviously, you know, you can have more freedom and flexibility with what you do and what you choose and how you do it and when you do it, when you have time, money, and location freedom. But if you don't know how you're going to feel when you get there, or you don't know how you want to show up, then again, the roadmap isn't as clear. And so having like that full 360 goal setting, you know, journal prompt to get really clear on who you want to be, how you want to feel, how you want to show up and what you want to achieve is really, uh, and it's necessary. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you on that. Like you said, you like the GPS without an address, like how do you know, uh, is the building red? Is it got windows? <laughs> yeah. Is it boarded up? Like, is it dark and scary or is it happy and joyful? And how are you going to, you know, money is a thing, but it's, it's nowhere near worth the same amount if you're not feeling it, you know, like you were working at Tom's, you were happy for a while. You know, the reason you probably left all of those jobs for a long time was because it wasn't filling that cup up. Mm -hmm. um, you knew deep down inside I, that wasn't your ultimate end game. So, you know, gut feelings, <laughs> you know, whether you should be getting out of the job that you're in and whether you should start. Um, so what are your thoughts, for instance, on a holistic nutritionist or somebody who's wanting to start their business and everybody else is starting a business and they're like, yeah, it's not for me. Do you think that person should start a business or do you think that that person needs to just maybe take some time backwards? Yeah, this is an interesting question because I feel like there's so much attention being put on like the dish, the nine to five, be your own boss. And like, that's not for everyone and that's okay because mm -hmm. entrepreneurship isn't for the you know the faint-hearted yeah <laughs> it's it challenges you in a whole set of new ways <laughs> and it's not for everyone and again that's okay you can moonlight as you know doing the nutrition thing if you just want to do something do it on the side as like a passion project and still because you could have a job that you really enjoy but you also want to fulfill another part of yourself you know, by doing something else. And so that's all right, but you just have to check in with your emotional guidance system, which is always, you know, very clear, but we don't always listen to it, is how do I feel doing this? Does this feel right for me? Mm -hmm. And so really you can tell by how you feel. For me, for me <clears throat> anxiety is, has always been a teacher. Well, always after I learned what anxiety was and, you know, and how to navigate it. But for me, it's like, if I'm in a space or doing something or feeling something or saying something that's not in alignment to who I truly am, I feel it. Mm -hmm. And we all feel it. We all, our emotions is our soul's language. It's the only way that it can communicate with us. And so the best way to get an answer of if you should or shouldn't be doing something is how do you feel about it? Mm -hmm. Right. And that is in every aspect of life, but particularly around the question is, does it get me excited? Does it get me fired up to think about doing this? Is it going to feel scary? Of course it is. Any, any change is going to feel scary. Our ego voice, you know, our ego mind is trying to keep us safe where we are, even if it's not comfortable or fulfilling. But just simply ask yourself, like, how do I feel in this job? How do I feel leaving this job? How do I, like, you know, if I get to this place, will I feel fulfilled? And just, yeah, just checking in with, I think, just your emotional guidance system and seeing how you feel in the situation and knowing that if you feel good about it, great. If you don't, you should probably ask a few more questions. It's very true because I think, um, well, the more and more common it becomes to have anxiety or depression, I think the more, and of course, it's mostly women, you know, for me, I'm speaking about my fibromyalgia and I also have anxiety and depression, which is all linked to that. And I feel like fibromyalgia is also my teacher and that is an amazing way to get introspective and technically rewrite your story about success, which is kind of what we were just talking about and making sure that we're clear on those goals and where we're going and, you know, using whatever feeling that we have, mind being chronic pain, you know, debil debilitating fatigue. Well, are those jobs 
you know, that I was keeping before jumping ship <laughs> and starting my own business, so, you know, like, are those, am I feeling this way because those are jobs I shouldn't be doing? Or am I being pulled somewhere else to do the job I'm supposed to be doing? Um, and so rewriting your story, um, I'll give you my perspective and see if we're in alignment, you know, like, I feel like we're kind of taught that we're supposed to go into a job and make money from nine to five and, you know, do what our parents did or do what our parents want us to do. And so how, what's one tip that you could give to our listeners on rewriting that story about success and not, and it not being about your parents or your grandparents or Bob down the road or whatever it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's so interesting that we just keep, I mean, so many of us keep just repeating like a societally accepted timeline and norm and a set of kind of standards that have been handed down to us. But then if we keep looking back generationally, it hasn't really always been the same. There has been evolution and change from, you know, our parents to their parents, to their parents before them, like things have changed. And so they technically didn't do things the exact same way that their parents did. They maybe took bigger chances, moved, you know, to a different country to, you know, I know that my parents moved to Canada from Greece. And it's just about looking at, okay, then what is our evolution? Like what, we aren't meant to do things the same as somebody else just because they're doing them. Like, or they've done it that way for a long time or that we're being told that we're supposed to do it that way. And so again, just the question prompt of like, does this feel right for me? Do I feel fulfilled in this? And you know what you said about the narrative of parents telling you that, you know, this is just what you do. You go and you work your job, whether or not you hate it. Like I've heard that so many times. Well, people don't, aren't supposed to love their job. They just do it. They work until they're 65, they get their pension and they, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that narrative, it's like, okay. And like, if you feel like that's what you want to do, then, then, go right ahead. Like no judgment, no nothing. Just like, if that's what you feel is right for you, then go ahead. But you know, deep down, if there's the calling to something more and it's just our choice of if we listen to it or not. And so when we start to rewrite our story, we have to start to detach from a story that's been given to us. So are we just living a story that's already been written or are we writing our own? And that in itself is the difference between living a unfulfilling or a fulfilling life because am I doing something on my terms or am I doing them on somebody, on somebody else's terms? Mm -hmm. And so it just, again, it's just about asking yourself the question and getting honest with yourself and doing the work that's going to get you to a place that you are feeling brave enough and courageous enough to do something that hasn't been done before within your you know, lineage maybe or within your environment. And it's not necessarily supported. I'll tell you. When I told my parents I was thinking of leaving my corporate job, <laughs> they were like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and they knew that it was such a great job. So they're like, um, you're mental. Like, what, what are you talking about? You know? And I had to almost prove to them. And there was that like fire in me to prove to them that I was capable of doing it. Note that I had tried other smaller entrepreneurial ventures before. And they had seen me quote unquote fail. And that's not a word in my vocabulary, but I'm going to throw it out there just for, you know, conversation's sake. <laughs> and so they just were basing their opinion of the matter on what, I, what they'd seen me do before. Right. And so of course they were going to feel worried. They wanted the best for me. They just wanted me to like be, you know, self-sustaining and be, you know, be in a job that paid me every, every other week. So since I knew that that wasn't my story, I knew that I was meant for more. Mm -hmm. And I had certain goals in my mind at the time, you know, work remotely, digital nomad, work from anywhere in the world. Really were just my main goals, period. That was it at the time. And it was not only me trying to deconstruct that story and build a new one, but it was also me trying to break that in that story for them. Yeah. That like, I didn't need to do it this way just because everybody's doing it this way. Doesn't mean that I have to do it this way. And they're very much 
of the mentality, you know, older generations are just like, you just do what you're supposed to do. You follow in line, you know, like it's kind of a very linear um, path for them as opposed to taking the road less traveled. And that can feel really scary for somebody who's been just doing something the same, like the way that they were supposed to for a very long time. And so deconstructing my story, writing my new one, and then also trying to give them the opportunity and the vision to do the same thing for themselves. So they can, you know, I really obviously wanted them to support me. <laughs> yeah, of course. And tell me that like I could do it, even though like that shouldn't matter. Like, of course you want the people that are closest to you to, to cheer you on. Yeah. And so yeah, just, it was very much a deconstructing of the story for me and for them. Yeah. And that'll bring me up to like limiting beliefs coming up next. So <clears throat> how did you get your parents to drop those limiting beliefs? Because for me, and it kind of sounds like you had a similar situation go on where once you start meditating and you start diving deep, you're sure, like there's no question about it. It's just like, it's in you, you got it. Um, there's just no question at all. And so it is about shining that out and trying to get, you know, the people who are closest around you know you as one person. And it's almost like coming out as a completely different human. Like, you know, for me, like goals are huge. Uh, staying on my routine is huge. And we're going to get into that in a few minutes. But, you know, how did you get your I'm sure your limiting beliefs probably crumbled away as you continued down your journey, but how did you get your sphere, let's say, to, you know, also see that you have let go of all of these beliefs about yourself and you're going to go and kick butt somewhere else? Um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that took a minute. <laughs> <laughs> a hot minute, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a hot minute. Very hot boiling minute. Um, yeah, it definitely wasn't, it definitely wasn't right away. It took, it took a few years to get them to see that what I was doing was not only important, but what was possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming into like my seventh year and I, it's so interesting because where they're at now and not just now, like it's been like, you know, a few years now, but where they're at now and the way that they see me as an entrepreneur and as like somebody who is a CEO of my business, you know what I mean? Like they, they see it in a more serious tone as they've watched me hit different levels of success and be like, Oh shit. Okay. I guess she's doing it. <laughs> we should probably <laughs> uh, believe that this is possible now, but it went from them. Like, I don't even remember how many times my mom asked, like, maybe you should look for another job. Like just, you know, just to have like, I'm just like, I'm not doing that you know, and then a lot of narratives around money. And so it's like, how, you know, what about money? What about this? And so like a lot of my limiting beliefs were definitely around money. And so them continuously having the money conversation with me from their limited point of view mm -hmm. um, wasn't helpful, but I had to like have the conversation with them. Oof, like honestly, probably more than a hundred times in small pieces. I'm just like, I need you to not talk about money with me. Like, I'm trying to rewrite my story and my belief about money. And I need this conversation to not keep happening because it, especially when it's your parents, like that's where you got your programming to begin with. <laughs> and so obviously that's going to weigh the heaviest when they give it your, give you their opinion. And so having that conversation over and over and over again, and don't get me wrong, there's, it's not like all limiting beliefs have just poof, gone out the window because new level, new devil, right? Like as you continue yeah. to go up, like it's just gonna be like, oh, new narratives. Let's <laughs> sneak into that little head of hers. And it was, it was over time. It was over time of not only me trying to like hit pause with certain conversations with them, but like I just couldn't have, I wasn't ready to have a conversation without being triggered. And not in like an angry way, but in like an insecure way way of just like, Oh, money, shit. Are they right? Are they? And so I had to like really hit a timeout and a pause on each of the conversations as they came up and really try to make them understand that I was trying to rewrite my story with money and I could not have these conversations with them. So that was a big one, but it was just that my consistency and my commitment and them seeing how dedicated I was to this and then starting to like follow me on Instagram. I got made the most Instagram accounts and like, you know, my dad probably has like four followers, but he really just wants to check out what I'm doing because my mom always talks about it. So he's like, I freaking hell, I want to see this. <laughs> and so, um, it, yeah, it took a while, but now honestly, like I have 
it's, I was talking to my sister about this the other day and we're having a good laugh about it is that they were the ones that programmed us. But after so long and spending so much time together in this new space, I've started to program them. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) And not even necessarily purposely, but just because they've heard the language that I speak, they've heard more than their fair share of client calls, you know, because I take them from everywhere. So it's like, they've been exposed to like my talk. They, they, read my posts, they read my emails, they watch my videos. And so it's been slowly implanting into them. And so they're starting to call out abundance. (laughs) You know, like I laugh every time like that things happen. Then my mom's like, oh, abundance. I was like, (laughs) yes. I'm like, we have made it into their brain. (laughs) And so things like that. And then, you know, I just dropped like $40,000 on a business mentor. And I remember having the conversation with her a week ago and being like, listen, I'm going to tell you the amount, but I need you to not have a heart attack. And she's like, okay. And I told her, and let me tell you, I remember telling her that I was putting $500 towards a course. And she was like, are you sure? That's a lot of money. And I told her I did this. She was like, there was a pause. (laughs) There was a definite pause. But then she goes, well, you know, to upgrade yourself, you have to invest in yourself. I'm like, holy shit. (laughs) <laughs> something has worked <laughs> not and your so, target market but it's working <laughs> it just was I subconsciously programmed them yeah and so and that's what you do when you really own and embody your power and your light you start to influence the people around you and so it's taken a while but I've slowly chipped away at not only my own limiting beliefs but theirs about me right because they've obviously seen me in a certain way, right? They've, they raised me. So it's like, they see me in a certain light and for me to break down the way that they see me to then shift into a way of like, okay, yeah, she's possible. She's capable of doing this and, you know, continuing to grow, which is obviously super validating for me, whether or not, you know, it's supposed to be, but it is Mm -hmm. um, admittedly. So when, and there's so many, I have so many clients that come up to me and say like, my parents, you know, don't believe in me. And you know, one of them that has, has started to distance themselves a little bit from their parents and see them less because it's just so challenging. They're in such a limiting mind space about money. Um, they think that what she's doing is like kind of ridiculous, that it's never, it's not going to happen, that like it, it, they're putting that on her. And when you're already kind of thinking that about yourself, yeah, it does not help to hear that from the people that are closest to you. So she started to distance herself just to give herself the space to start to really work on those narratives herself so that when she does have the conversations with her parents, that it doesn't affect her as much because she has a, a firmer footing in what her actual truth and belief is. And so this is a big thing for a lot of people. I, I've, you know, I've had many conversations around this um, with family. And my advice to that is have some distance or don't have the conversations, you know, mm-hmm around certain things, put pause with love and compassion on certain conversations, whether it's about money or whatever it is, and then get so firm in your footing that you're unshakable Mm -hmm. and that you start to prove them wrong. And then they start to see you in that light as well. Yeah. And I think that hits on, on your point about investing in your healing. And so when you can really know who you are, through that journey of, of whatever path that is, whether it's, you know, meditation or affirmations or a mix of everything or having a business coach or having a coach, um, investing the money in yourself is only going to make more abundance and also help you in your coaching practice. Um, I know for me, like I didn't feel comfortable enough when my family you know, when I lived in Canada, actually, my family was around because I didn't think they believed in me. And so having that distance between us and being able to spend time, you know, working on myself and through my fibro and all of those things has helped me see how those people in my life have made me believe in myself a certain way. And that I am not that person. I'm probably nothing like what most people actually envision me to be most of the time. And um, yeah, and now business kind of has come through that, which I think is why it's so important. So when you talk about invest in your healing, what are some of the things that you've done? Um, you know, I have a list we can go through. Morning routine, let's start with that one. Oh my gosh. Are you a morning person? <laughs> 
this is okay. I have something called my morning magic method and I teach it to my Amazing. sister clients. Yeah. And we're actually in the process right now um, in the design phase of creating a morning magic method journal. So stay tuned for that. Amazing. Because I am a huge, huge, huge advocate of the power that a morning can hold for you. Mm. And it really all started, I don't know how many years ago, let's say three years ago, two years ago, when I heard a quote from Brendan Burchard. Mm. And he said, show me what the first hour of your day looks like and I'll tell you what type of person you are. And I was like, oh, like, I like literally <laughs> felt like I got gut punched. I was like, oh, freaking out. Because I was like, oh, I could only imagine what he would have been able to say about me at the time, which this is a lot of people wake up, go to your phone, check messages, check Instagram, check emails, you know, begrudgingly get ready and plop down in front of your laptop or just rush out the door to go to work, whatever your you know situation is. There is zero space in that routine for any level of growth, of groundedness, of inner peace, of self-awareness, of, you know, creating a trajectory for your day and then for your goals. And for, it's just, there's no space available in there for, for living a fulfilling, successful, feel good life. Mm-hmm. If we're just a slave to the doing versus the being. And so And plus, you know, you get onto your phone and you're automatically in this fight or flight. Like, what do people need from me? What timelines? Oh shit, that message came through and is giving me anxiety. Okay, that email needs to get responded to. What do I need to do? You're in other people's world. And then on Instagram, you're in other people's lives and other people's goals and other people's things. And you haven't even landed in yourself. Yeah. And so to answer that question, yes, morning routines are very important to me. Uh, <laughs> that was a very, very wholehearted uh, oh, TED, <laughs> TED talk. Yeah. <laughs> and so my morning routine, my morning magic method falls into three categories, get still, get moving, get going. And the get still is the introspection, is the processing any morning thoughts and feelings to meditating, gratitude, a more expanded version of gratitude, which is I'm grateful for blank because, because that's when you get into the feelings, which is the most important part of gratitude as opposed to just wrapping them off just to get it done. Um, and doing like a, you know, a little journal prompt just to like continue to self-regulate, self-evaluate and build self-awareness, um, which I have certain prompts that are set out um, with my specific method. But then after you get still, you get moving and that's, you know, two tiered. That's, move your body and move your mind or move your brain. And so moving your body, we all know what that is, you know, you know, myriad of different ways, whether it's a stretch or a walk or, you know, jumping on a little trampoline or doing a workout or yoga or like whatever that is for you, dance party in your underpants, like whatever, <laughs> whatever your jam is totally fine. As long as you're moving your body, you're stagnant for, you know, seven, eight, nine hours if you're lucky. And you need to move that energy and you need to also connect to your body as the vessel in which you are living this human experience through. And so having that connection and obviously, you know, to be healthy, et cetera. (laughs) And then moving your brain, your brain is a muscle too. And if we're not challenging it and moving it and working it, you know, what's the quote that says, if you, when you stop learning, you stop living. Yeah. Yeah. You know, listening to a beautiful podcast, listening to an audio book or reading, you know, something that's thought, Uh, evoking and even if there's an online course that you're doing doing like a little module of it before emails before anything you know what I mean like uh, out uh, worldly just something to work your brain like when I listen to audiobooks in the morning I get so inspired because obviously I'm the majority of them 99.9 percent of them are like self-development so you know business like all these books because I'm obsessed and so they get me so revved up and excited and inspired and make me feel excited to do different things that are being suggested or to change you know things about myself or the way that I'm thinking you know speaking and being but also that reflects on to my clients because if I'm better and I'm doing better then I can help them do better because you can really only help somebody to the level at which you've helped yourself and so as you continue to grow and evolve you can do the same thing for your clients 
and you just step into your day feeling a lot more inspired. And then the last aspect of it is get going. And that's where you get clear. That's where I call it a success list, which is what are my like top priority things today? That if I get these done or even like one of them done, I will feel like it's a successful day. Mm -hmm. But also, as we were talking about success before, is not just the doing, but it's also how we're feeling throughout the day. Because yeah, sure, if we've checked off a gazillion things off our to-do list, that's one thing. But if we feel like shit, that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's not only the, you know, the success list with a priority of items that you want to get done, you need to get done, but it's also how can I have a successful day with the way that I feel? And so there's yes. like you know, a list of things that you can choose to do um, throughout the day or commit to, like smile more, an act of kindness, you know, hydrate, um, it, reach out to somebody that you have been meaning to reach out to for a while, um, have a midday breath break and stretch break, you know, like just different things that you can, you know, checkpoints throughout your day that you can make sure that you are feeling present and that you're feeling good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then another aspect of the get going is getting your energetic point of attraction going and how that's done is through like intentions and affirmations. When we choose to set an intention at the beginning of our day, like an intention of, I want to feel good and have fun all day. Then you think automatically, you're starting to think of how can I feel good and have fun all day? For me, it's like having, playing good music as I'm working or having a little dance party in the middle of the day or taking a midday walk, you know? So you start to kind of get that energy going. And then when you're working through affirmations, when you start to speak into a space, an energetic space, it's easier for you to embody that level or that, you know, that version of yourself when you've already made a proclamation of it from the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I am a confident, calm, and creative boss babe who is a magnet to all things that are in my highest alignment and highest good. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to, it's a catalyst. It's a little sparking point for that energy so that there's more potential of that having a stronger level of attraction and manifesting throughout your day than there is of just waking up groggy, annoyed and stubbing your toe. And, you know, I did that this morning, actually. First thing, <laughs> not going to lie. I did. We have rabbits and I had, I just have to laugh at it because it hurts so bad, but it was a, a good reminder for me because I was like, okay, you're moving too quick today. Like yeah. slow down. Like there's no rush. You're going to the garden later. Like you'll be all right. But yeah, I fully like, we have bunnies and we have this board that goes across the kitchen door so that they can't get in. And I fully tripped on it and my toe is purple and cut. Oh. And so, yeah, it's funny that you said or stub your toe yeah i totally fully did that this morning oh my goodness yeah but what you did which is the whole point of it what you did was find a very quick lesson in it and say okay you need to chill yeah and like this is just you know the universe telling you to slow down when the majority of people who aren't as aware and kind of conscious in their mornings or in their day-to-day -day, they'd stub their toe get super pissed off or frustrated and then it would just be an avalanche of that throughout the day that would continue to perpetuate because they haven't shifted out of that. So then they spill coffee on themselves as they're running out the door. And then, you know, somebody cuts them off in traffic and then they get frustrated and then they get to work and they get into trouble from their boss. And then they, like, it's just like one thing after another, as opposed to like, okay, like, obviously acknowledge the fact that it hurts. You're not just gonna be like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. You know, like, okay, <laughs> understandably it hurt, but then just taking those breaths and being like, okay, we're going to just leave that there and just move forward into the rest of this day from a place of choice and not reactivity. Yes. Yeah. Reaction was a big one. I think as I was going through my, my meditation journey was, you know, respond versus react, like be able to like step back and just be able to say, okay, this is how I'm feeling. And that's the one thing that's coming up. And I'll just quickly touch on like my journey and most people know it, but like when I was consulting, my energy was down and I was like not taking care of myself. There was zero self-care 
and well, there had been zero self-care for a very long time prior to that, but it wasn't, um, I was getting success in my business, but people still weren't following my plans. And what I realized after going through this journey myself was, you know, if we're not walking the talk, we're not projecting our ultimate like being forward. And we're going to, you know, I guess, give out what we're expecting back in. And so like when you said, you know, have those conversations with your parents, who are you hanging around with? What feelings are you having? All of those things come into play um, more in the body, mind, soul, uh, self-care aspect. And we start to realize that if we want our clients to be successful, we also have to have a, well, I think we have to have a successful mindset, you know, as in, are you setting yourself up for success for the day? Like if you know you have food sensitivities and you eat that, you know, cappuccino, is that going to ruin what you have planned for the day? You know, like just making sure that you're checking in with yourself about where you want to be as well. Um, so yeah, through meditation, I was able to kind of find my groove that way. Um, but what I saw really was the big shift of gratitude. The more I was thankful for the abundance or for everything that I was being given, more would come in. <laughs> um, so I assume you use the word abundance for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> abundance. Oh my gosh. So I was, when I was in Costa Rica this past winter, we go there in the winters, my, my partner and I, and we ended up having a little bit of like a group living situation because when all this quarantine was happening and borders were closing, people were just like, I'm just going to stay. And so we, we were all hanging out with this, this cool high vibe group. And um, the, the villa that we were staying at was like up in like a mountain. And so it was, you know, my friend who owns the property called it Care Bear Mountain. And so we all picked Care Bear names like they had them from before. But then, you know, I was newer into the group. And so I picked Abundance Bear as mine. And... <laughs> Abundance, I feel like ab abundance isn't just like a word that speaks about like money, you know, because I think when people hear abundance, they think money, like, okay, like an abundance of money. Abundance to me is not a word. It's a lifestyle and a way of being. Mm -hmm. If you show up in the world, like there is more than enough health, wealth, and happiness for you to play within you show up in a very different way because abundance is the lack of limiting beliefs or the lack of limits or the lack of scarcity. Mm -hmm. Thinking that there's only enough to go around is, you know, scarcity. Thinking that if I get, then somebody else loses. If somebody else gets, then I lose, you know, I mean? like, or I can't get as much. And and thinking that maybe there's only a certain level of happiness and joy and fulfillment that we can achieve and attract. And so when you put that aside and you shift into the mindset and to the core belief that there is more than enough of everything and I have access to it and I am innately and by birthright an abundant infinite being, you show up like you can feel the way that you're going to show up. Like even with my, just me saying this, you have more trust, you have more faith, you're in more flow. You trust in divine timing and divine intervention and where you're being guided to. And if something doesn't work out, you're like, it, you know, you, you don't get fixated on that being the be all end all. You're like, Ooh, something better is coming along. I wonder what's going to come <laughs> along. That's better than that. When I thought that was the best you know, possible <laughs> option for me. And when you live in that space of poss of infinite possibility, life gets to be really fun and playful. Yeah. It's this or something better. And if you have like a specific goal in mind, that's cool this or something better because you don't know what you don't know. You know, one of my kind of early teachers um, that was an audio series that was given to me in one of my kind of my early stages of my self-development journey. Um, he's like, he says, you don't know what you don't know. You ain't that smart. Like if you think that you can <laughs> think of all of the infinite possibilities that the universe has in there, like you got some work to do, you know? <laughs> Because we can't possibly imagine our level of 
understanding or potentiality is like this tiny little radar screen, he calls it, this little radar screen. And this is what we do. We have this, we're just hanging out in the middle. And this is how we think we can make more money or how we can achieve certain things or what's possible for us. Because we're so fixated on the how, especially coming from a type personality over here of being like, I need to like control these different aspects and elements of my life. And like, if I can have a clear roadmap and know exactly how I'm going to make this much money or I'm going to achieve that life goal, or I'm going to get to this place to live in Costa Rica every winter or whatever, you know, my goals were at the time that I thought the, this was the only way these possibilities that were in my realm of understanding were how that was possible. But what's, re what's really happening, you know, in the ether is infinite in every direction from that radar screen, from that little tiny little bubble that we're living in our potentiality or our perceived potentiality. So abundance is knowing that I don't need to know. I don't mm -hmm. need to know. Do I need to have a looking at a little roadmap to like take aligned action? So it's a very different, it's a very different energy around it when you take aligned action versus forced and fearful and scarce and lack filled filled action. Mm -hmm. And so when you're taking aligned action, like I'm going to do my part, I'm going to take care of what's going on up in here. <laughs> you know, I'm going to make sure that my mind is right. I'm going to sit, I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm feeling good and that I'm having fun and that I'm finding ways to feel fulfilled and abundant and joyous and whole and complete right here where I am while taking aligned action towards goals. And from that place, and everybody's experienced it, but they didn't necessarily know what it was, you know, if they were outside of the awareness of like meeting a certain person that directed you in a certain direction to meet that other person that got you that opportunity that led you to that. Like, there's, there's not, there's no coincidence. It's funny. It's, I just wrote the word coincidence down yeah, on the paper amazing. to be like, so all these people are going to be like, here's the coincidence that popped up. But if we really look at it, you know, there's got to be a greater thing. If you're aligned in what you're doing and you're feeling confident about who you are and where you are in that, there is no coincidences. It just continues to snowball down. And uh, it's always funny for me because I'm a very open and aware person. And my husband's just, he's there. He's got it. He knows he's got it, but he's still got his little like wings on, you know, his water wings in the pool. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm in here, but I'm still not ready to take these bad boys off. And it's funny because I'll have these coincidences and I'm like, look, like, come on, like take these things off. It's going to do the same thing for you. And it's so funny to see the fear around it. So I wanted to ask, you like what was your one biggest mistake in this journey well there's probably a lot of them what do you think your one biggest mistake was in this journey of coming to abundance and living what you think is like your your ultimate life now versus what it could be obviously but you know what is your one mistake that you think you made and people should just you know dive in right away not believing that it was real. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and listen, like, just because I said that right now, not everybody who's listening to be like, Oh, okay. Now I'm going to believe that it's all real. Let's go. Manifestation, <laughs> law of attraction, woo woo, all that stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> because it's also important to know that. And I don't believe, I mean, I don't believe in mistakes. So I think that I just want to put that out there <laughs> because it's all necessary learning curves along the way and forms us into the person that we are and forms our decision making and you know choosing who we want to be in the future but it's it, it is always going to be a learning curve but it's just you having the willingness to believe that it is possible and yeah oh my gosh law of attraction and manifestation is so funny because I feel like when I started to like get into this world and being like okay I think I kind of sort of get it <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna sit and just think really hard about this one thing like mm, you know thinking really hard to try to make this this thing happen which is not how it works and I'm still figuring out how it works you know what I mean like it's always like it's this learning curve but it's just like 
it's always working, I think actually is, is a good place to start. And what I was gonna get to in, in the realm of like coincidence is if you think that life is happening to you, you will always be powerless hmm. to its creation. Yeah. Because if you're constantly just like, things keep happening to me, blah, 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 like all the time, then you give your power away to something else. When if you can own the reality that I have co-created all things, and that can feel defeating if you think about it, you know, in the wrong way, because you're like, well, then I did all of these things to myself. I, you know, all of these things happened in my life. Was that a co like, I, if I co-created that, like, why would I do that to myself? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, how did you feel during those times? And it's just like the level of energetics that happen within our emotions. But if we can kind of move past the feeling of defeated or feeling like, you know, bad about it and knowing that when I can claim ownership of what has happened in my life, that means I can also reclaim my power in changing it. Mm -hmm. And so you can get stuck in the one, but if you know, you're more than welcome to come to the side of like, <laughs> I'm just going to reclaim my power in this and knowing that like things are happening with me as opposed to, to me, you know, they're happening for me. And so if I can then just be aware of like, okay, well, what's my external situation? What's going on in my life? What am I attracting? What situations, what people, what circumstances, what events? And starting to just ask, okay, what can I do if I don't like what's happening out here? What can I do within myself, within the way that I'm thinking, feeling, speaking, acting, and believing so that I can start to impact my outer world in a more empowered way? Then you start to take more ownership of how you feel and be like, okay, like I'm not going to put things like I'll feel fulfilled when I'll feel happy when I'll feel whole when I'll feel loved when I'll feel validated when I'm putting every, everything. So in the future, when I get the job, when I get the relationship, when I buy the house, when I get the promotion, when I hit this many, you know, five figure months, multiple, five, like what, whatever that that is for you, that will make you feel happy, whole, complete, wealthy, successful, whatever it is. But if you can look at your current situation and give yourself permission to find reasons to feel all of those ways now, that is the trigger of so much magic in your life because it's not future tense. It's here now. Mm -hmm. And then when you're vibrating at that frequency, then you will undoubtedly attract more of that same frequency that or things, people, circumstances, situations, events that will make you feel more of the things that you are choosing to feel now, as opposed to having them be held in this future tense prison, because then you'll never really get there. You know, we get to this goal and then we're like, okay, but we haven't really felt fulfilled yet. And we're waiting for this goal to fulfill us. So we don't even really know what that feels like. And so when we get there, we're like, okay, but now the next thing, okay, but now the next thing. And it's constantly this vicious cycle of future tense, fulfillment, happiness, joy, abundance, wholeness, completeness, happiness. Like it's always future tense. So we keep chasing it as opposed to embodying it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I always, well, Sean and I always say this to each other, clean your room, you know, like, <laughs> Uh, you know, instead of going out and cleaning up the community or cleaning up everything that's around you or thinking that you're doing that, like, have you got it together yourself? So as an impact driven entrepreneur and, you know, like I started this business so that I could help nutritionists help more people. And so again, it's like through my own journey that it's, I'm realizing that if I don't clean my own room, I don't take care of myself. I don't have that daily routine of getting up you know, I start work at 930. But before that, I have my routine, I go to the garden, or I meditate, or I, you know, sit with myself, I plan out my day consciously, like, this absolutely has to get done today, this can wait, don't stress, like mm -hmm. all of those things together is clean your room, like make sure you're on point. Because if you're not on point, how are you ever going to expect somebody else to be on point for you or working with you? Um, lead by example is like the 
the way we kind of said it before, but I also feel like when you're adjusting to this way of living, it's kind of like a wave. You know, you feel like you're on top of the world and then you come crashing down a bit. And the more that you stay kind of in that keeping care of yourself, keeping care of your space and who you are, the more it kind of levels out and you don't have to try as hard. Like you said, it just becomes a way of living and isn't so, well, daunting, I guess, is the right task. Um, you know, because if you have to learn how to do yoga and meditate and do affirmations, like it can sound like a daunting task, but I don't know. I, I think, I, I think for me, like now it's become more of a routine and that's the part that I want to share because it's such a, you know, when you stub your toe in the morning, instead of getting mad, you can be like, mm, yep, that really hurt. And like stumble around for a minute. I hugged my toe really hard. And I was like, I love <laughs> you. It's okay. <laughs> um, but I wanted to, I know I'm like going on a whole tangent here, but one really cool experience that I had was in my garden. So I've always really felt super connected to nature and earth. And I love going in the dirt and getting muddy and watching plants grow and everything. And mm. so we have this massive plot in a community garden here in Switzerland. And some Portuguese guy came up to me and was yelling at me because he was saying that my garden was disgusting. Oh. And so <laughs> I was like, okay, like, thanks for your advice. Like, go on now. Like, that's enough. But I went and I went home and I meditated. And I was like, all I felt was, have you been showing up for the garden? You know, like, have you been doing your best work in there? You know, is it a representation of where you're at right now? And it totally was. Like, I was wow. not putting in the work that I needed to do. And so I was like, you know what, this is, you know, I was able to respond instead of getting angry about it. I was able to, you know, respond in a way that felt better to me instead of getting aggressive and angry. I showed up in my garden for like a week straight and really cleaned it up and got things going. And some amazing things happened in there. Like the more effort I put in and the more energy and co-creation I made with it, you know, more worms started showing up. These avocado plants that I had tried to grow didn't grow in the house, but in my compost heap that I was taking care of, they started to grow. And now I have a lovely tree in my house, you know? So it's really, it, those are the like a moment for me where I'm like, okay, this really does work. It really is. Um, about building awareness around it too. So making sure you're paying attention to the things that are coming your way too. And what a beautiful example that is. I mean, even with, you know, this Portuguese man who came and told you off <laughs> that you, instead of reacting to it, honored and acknowledged what it triggered for you yeah and we're just honest about why it maybe hit home as much as it did and that goes to show that I mean with all triggers that happen in our lives if we're triggered by something we need to not look at the person or the event or the circumstance that was the cause of the trigger but we need to maybe ask ourselves why we are triggered by that particular situation yeah and there's so much honesty and sometimes harsh and brutal honesty that when we can see that it's something that's maybe unhealed or is, you know, something that we're feeling not the greatest about or because if I, this is a great example. So if somebody came up to you and you feel like you are a smart individual and, you know, you're intelligent and you, you know, critical thinking and a problem solver and somebody says you're stupid and you're like okay for that I appreciate your input because you're firm in the fact that you're a smart individual now if you had silent and quiet feelings about yourself that you were not intelligent and that you were not smart and somebody said you're stupid that would hit you in a very different way mm -hmm. and you would probably get upset and uh, mad about it or maybe even you know have some emotions around it because you felt in some way that it was true. So this is a great example of why it's 
so important for us to lean into our own, you know, inner worlds and have a greater level of understanding and awareness of what is even happening in here, you know, in yes. this mind of ours. Because the more that we can be honest about the things that we're not feeling the greatest about and we can start doing work around them, the more unshakable and, I mean, unfuckable we will be, you know? And so we can really build a very strong foundation, but also have less reactivity around when something is said that does hit truth for us, that we can take that and turn it into something that is actually productive just like you did, you're like, okay, like you could have just been like, screw you and blah, 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 and F off and like just gotten mad at the guy. But instead you're like, he's right. Like in some ways, like he probably could have delivered it a little differently, but a lot differently. Like there's, yeah, <laughs> I, there was truth in that, that I wasn't tending to my garden on, you know, such a great analogy, my, my inner and outer garden. You right. Know? I right. wasn't tending to it. And it was not yielding the results exactly. that I was looking for. Yeah. And so you did something different about it, but that comes only with a higher level of awareness. And when you can sit in your life and be more of a witness and a, an observer in what's going on around you and just be like, Oh shit, that's coming up for me. Yeah. And that takes time. That's not an overnight thing. And so that's, you know, the work with the meditation with, I mean, this question was asked, earlier and I just remember to answer it now but some of the work that you can do that there's honestly there's oh my god there's so many different beautiful possibilities that you can do for your own healing and for your own self-investigation you know a lot of oh god I've done so many different things but like even like things like Reiki you know getting a Reiki treatment from somebody who can give you really nice understanding of where there might be some stuck, stagnant, or blocked energy and what to do and how that impacts your overall life. You know, if you have like a blocked or there's a resistance or some yeah blockage around your root chakra, mm-hmm. for example, that's a, you know, that's a lot about your safety and security and groundedness. And like, so if you're feeling anxiety, there's all, there's some work that needs to be done and just feeling like your feet are flat, uh, you know, firmly on the ground and feeling safe. And so doing stuff like that, that you can start to like get a little bit of an inner understanding of what's happening in your, in your energetics and in your world. And even things like, you know, acupuncture, acupuncture isn't just for like relieving a muscle when that's done in like a more sacred way, you can move energy very powerfully. I remember I did a um, acupuncture specifically, she did like sacred geometry acupuncture and she put an acupuncture needle on like the inside of my left heel. And like, I literally felt like something had like energetically popped and then traveled very quickly up my leg, up my body. And I cried, like I could have screamed on that table. I had so much of whatever the heck it was yes. in there that I hadn't processed, obviously, that I just bawled like, wow. Like I can't even, like, I, I can't even believe how much I cried. And I obviously needed to release something you know, some, some grief or some, some, you know, some unresolved emotions. But if we don't start to get that inner, you know, a little bit of an inner Sherlock Holmes situation to start understanding what's going on within us, we're never going to be able to really choose how we want to show up and choose how we want to feel and choose how we want to be in our lives. So yeah, Reiki, a lot of, you know, some of the things that also really helped me was, I mean, plant medicine, there's a lot of beautiful, like, you know, non-psychedelic plant medicine, obviously, but like for me, it was ayahuasca, mushrooms, they're such beautiful gifts of this earth, really helping me working through anxiety and working through past emotions, but it's to what everybody is obviously feels comfortable with. Don't worry, you're in a pretty safe, hippy-dippy sphere here. (laughs) (laughs) You're good. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, sitting with those medicines really gave me a great understanding of my truth. I remember even when I was coming, you know, working through kind of my deeper holds of anxiety and my first ayahuasca ceremony, which was, I mean, a while ago, probably like seven years ago was a a basically like almost a movie reel of all the reasons why I had anxiety and Mm. how much of myself I had given away and how far I had strayed from my own personal alignment 
in my boundaries, in my self-worth, in my self-respect, in how I let people treat me. You know, the relationships was a big one for me that just like these people who were putting ideas in my mind of who I was and what I was worthy of and the treatment that I was okay with, you know? Yeah. Um, and that I just strayed so far from who I was and my spirituality. Like I used to go to church every day growing up, not every day, my God, every Sunday. <laughs> that would be really intense. Every Sunday as a kid, probably until I was like 18. And then I, I am not so much of, of the institution of church, but spirituality is obviously very important to me being connected to something greater than, and that you are that something greater as well. But I had just completely disconnected from it. And there was a message within that first ayahuasca ceremony that was very much of get back into your practices, get back mm -hmm. into spirituality. You know, I've envisioned myself kind of floating above the area that we used to sit in that church, but it was not the church. It was just like that sacred space that I had to figure out what was right for me and I needed to get back into. So that's where I'm like a lot of like the meditation and like the reading, just reading about, you know, different ideologies and like understanding where I fit into all of it and what felt right for me. But plant medicines is like, I mean, a hundred therapy sessions in, in a night, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so it'd be really being able to give you a very clear and honest understanding of what you need to work through. And so things like that really, really helped, um, you know, some, some therapy, some coaching, some, I mean, I, I'm probably forgetting a lot of the things that I did because there's just so much of it, but just really giving yourself permission to invest in your own healing mm -hmm. because, you know, I talk about something called energetic capacity and it's when, if you have a lot of unresolved past traumas, emotions, and, and trauma doesn't mean it has to be so extreme. Trauma is a very wide scale of something that brought you pain, physical, emotional, you know, verbal, whatever it was. But when you start to work through some of the things from the past, it can absolutely feel scary because a lot of times we don't want to go down, you know, that, that road or open that Pandora's box. But when you give yourself permission to start to work through and heal some of the things from our past. Not only are you removing palpable, measurable energy from your body that blocks different parts of our energetic field, our chi, you know, like whatever you want to call it, but we're energetic beings after all, we vibrate at a frequency. And so when we have blocked energy, it's going to affect us on an emotional, on an energetic, on a cellular, on a physical, on a, you know, and a lot of like illness, disease, um, physical pain comes from the stem of a lot of really deeply rooted and unresolved emotions. And so a really amazing book for that is called The Emotion Code um, by Dr. Bradley, Bradley Nelson. And there's also a documentary on Gaia called E-Motion. It talks about just how energy gets stuck throughout our body. And yeah. It's, it, it was super, it opened up my mind so, so much. Yeah. And when we give ourselves permission to lean into that healing space, however that feels comfortable for us from where we're at, then we start to make more room and make more space and our energetic capacity for more health and happiness and joy and abundance again in all the areas, health, wealth, and happiness. But it's like each little piece of unresolved emotion, past situation, event trauma, is like a little weight. Well, then you know, and like, yeah. yeah, a little weight of, of allowing us to really get into higher levels of alignment. And when we're in higher levels of alignment, that's when things start to flow with a little bit more ease and more fun and more magic. We have to work through, we can't expect to just be so forward focused that we don't go kind of inwards and it's not to dwell in the past, but it's to honor and acknowledge what's happened and really allow yourself to work through some of it. It doesn't have to be every single thing, you know, it doesn't like we have to be fully hold enlightened, illuminated, floating above a mountain somewhere beings. It's just releasing some of the energetic weight that is holding us back from living a really vibrant life. Yeah, and we're all sure. worthy of that. We all deserve to have that. And so if we don't do the work, we don't lean into that space, there's 
a, a piece of a limiting belief of maybe a lack of self-worth or self-love or self-respect because we don't think that we're worth the time, effort, energy, investment, money, whatever it's going to take to get us to a place of feeling better. And so just, and I think that's why a lot of us do the work that we do is to give other people permission to feel better. And then however that is for us, yes, okay, I'm a business coach, but it's very much in the space of spirituality and soulfulness and alignment and what that means and like recommending different things. Can I do all of those things? No, but I can recommend a ton of people who will. Yeah, exactly. And so, but it's just, it's a whole, like you say, you know, you're a holistic nutritionist. What does that mean? Is that you're looking at all of that, all of the aspects. You're not just looking at one thing. We need to do the same thing within our healing and within our growth and within our development. Yeah. Yeah. I'm off a real tangent there, but that's, well, you're, that's where we landed. <laughs> that's what we wanted to do was do the tangents. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right. And Oh man, our stories sound so similar. I mean, among most people, I think, who kind of go down the realm of like spirituality or digging within yourself or learning to be still, like the quieter you can be, the more creative you can be too. And I think that's where it's really fun when you're working on yourself while you're working on your business because. I, I find that the more in line I am with my business, the more in line I am with taking care of myself and vice versa. And mm -hmm. it makes me want to show up better and be better for myself, but also so that I can actually make an impact, like you said. And um, I'm just going to quickly touch on the plant medicine thing. I've never done ayahuasca or um, what's the one that starts with P? Peyote. Peyote? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, for my fibro, I use weed all the time, you know, like I'll microdose throughout the day. Or if I really like I have a severe question about something and I wouldn't recommend this if you've never meditated before, but, you know, smoking a little bit of weed and then meditating on top of it, it just allows you to like really let go and travel down the, the road of what does it have to say? What is it going to show you? Um, or what are you going to show yourself, I guess, should be a better way of putting it is, you know, finding that inner critic and also finding the one who's positive and trying to marry the two. <laughs> yeah. <exactly>. Um, <laughs> making sure that, you know, you're staying on point. Um, so I want to kind of wrap up the podcast, but like you said, it's always good to have fun. So I always like to close off with a couple like, questions that are fun <laughs> um so what's your favorite book right now oh my god you gotta pick one <laughs> that's a very challenging question um oh, i mean i'll i could tell you which one i'm listening to right now sure i'm re-listening to the art of allowing mm. from abraham hicks i'm just just found it in my list. I was going for a walk the other day and I was like, I want to listen to an audiobook, And I decided to just throw that on. It always just makes me feel very clear, like taking something super mystical and, you know, intangible like manifestation and, and the art of allowing, you know, abundance into your life and just makes it seem like, okay, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So I just, it just makes me feel really good. And it, I feel like it increases my vibration just by listening to it. So that's my, that's where I'm at right now. Maybe that's what I'll have to do. But I do the same thing is I'll throw on, you know, even if it's a webinar or to grab ins inspiration, like we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already been done. Like you just have to listen to it, grab inspiration and continue down the path. And, yep. and I think that's, what's really interesting about learning and always being a continuous learner is that you find more people and then you can create exactly what you want out of it mm -hmm. i have to comment because we're talking about books that your books are rainbow organized and it's totally <laughs> something that i used to do before i had kids like i would rainbow organize my clothes oh my goodness so i just had to appreciate yep. that from afar thank you yeah i redid my office um, a little while ago I actually have like a before and after like little time lapse video on my instagram but i've never done that before and as I was like created this beautiful office space, I'm like, ooh, I should totally color code these because usually I just do them maybe like size or just really throw them all in there. Um, but yeah, I decided to take it a step further and 
and color code them. I think it looks so cute. I have like the white ones at the top. Yeah, you know, yeah. I saw that. And then it perfectly leads down into the creamy colored ones. I was admiring yeah. it the whole time. Thank you, you. Said, <laughs> you said type A personality, like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> like how much more organized could you get? I'm also a Virgo, which just makes me like ultimately <laughs> obsessed with organization. Um, mm. But I was commenting too, because there's a show on my downtime right now when I'm like, you know, need half an hour to just like be blank is there's this organization show uh and I can't remember what their handle is but they were Instagram famous and now they have this show and they like organize like the Kardashians house and like Reese Witherspoon's house and then other people as well but like I'm like sitting there like so excited about the organization <laughs> and their whole thing is like rainbow everything is in rainbow so like clothes and yeah. like everything that's color yeah that's yeah. really cool and I was like ah. Uh, I could dig that. Yeah, next next would be my closets to do it too. hundred percent. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, take a take a break. Yeah, <laughs> don't be too obsessive. It can yeah. get away. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to check out that book though. Art of allowing. <clears throat> is it on audiobook? I have to ask. Is it a, with a good voice or is it like a? It's it's Jerry Hicks who reads it. He reads all the books. Awesome. Okay, so I'll I'll give it a a listen, and then. Um, I'm going to ask you, what are the one thing that you're working on right now uh, that you'd like to share with our listeners? I actually did give a little bit of a sneak peek earlier, but I can, I can definitely speak on it again because it is so exciting for me, um, is creating the Morning Magic Method journal. And we just brought on a designer and yeah, it's, it's happening and I'm really excited and it's just an opportunity for me to help more people with something that I think is so vital mm. to really living a more fulfilling, joyous, abundant life um, is, is unlocking the potential and power that every morning holds. So it's, it's, it's going to be very, very cool. And I'm very oh, excited about it. When is that set to launch? Do you know? Likely sometime in November. Likely sometime in November. You'll have to keep me posted on that. I will. I'm very interested. Um, yeah, well, for sure. We, well, I didn't. My husband got super into the five minute journal. Um, and I know that's a big one around our, you know, nutrition world and fitness world, but um, I would love a more spiritually based one and see, see what, uh, what you come up with. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I like, obviously like I've done the morning magic. I have two weeks left in my, in my current one. I know that because they give you like a prompt page to buy another one, but I feel like after doing it for a certain amount of time that like I've graduated, like, I feel like it's just, it's not enough mm. for me, for where I'm at. I, you know what I mean? Like an, it's a wonderful, wonderful book. And I mean, everybody should, should try it, but I feel like there's, I just like want that little bit more, you know, as I expand, as I grow and evolve and have a higher level of commitment to myself in my mornings. I'm like, I just, there was some pieces that you know, we're missing. And I just really like little check boxes. And I like to like really get, get in there. And, um, you mean you want it organized can. really well, <laughs> clean, linear, you know, organized check boxes, <laughs> spaces for everything. A hundred percent. Um, okay. So where can our listeners find you? Yeah. You can come hang out with me on Instagram at sit with Anna and sit with Anna.com amazing and if there's one final piece of advice that you'd like to leave for our listeners what would it be just do it whatever it is whatever it is that's on your mind whatever it is that's been calling you whatever it's that's been tugging at you whether it's business related whether it's self development related whether it's healing related whether it's moving, whatever it is that you've been hearing a call or having a tug, just do it. Just, just do it because life is really short and we're in this human experience for such a small amount of time. And I feel like you are worthy of your own efforts and investment. Yeah. I think that's an amazing advice because honestly, if you, if you stay where you are, you're never going to grow and you're never going to see what could potentially be or what you could potentially be either. So, yeah. And just, they say that, you know, when they're, when they ask, and I've read so many of these beautiful, impactful and emotional articles that they talk about speaking to those who are within the, their last, you know, few days of life and they talk about their biggest regrets and 
they just, you know, a, a huge one is just like not taking more chances and doing the things that I felt like I wanted to do. For sure. And so just really allowing yourself and giving yourself self permission to be brave and just go for it. And even, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Really? Yeah. What's, what's the worst that can happen? You have to go back and like get your job back or. Yeah. Like what's the worst that can happen? Well, like I always say this to my clients and to anybody who I'm having this conversation with go there go there think about what's the worst that can happen mm -hmm. if it's anything less than death <laughs> you know like <laughs> if you won't die <laughs> just go like there's nothing <laughs> like that's okay there's nothing really that bad that can happen yeah you can't bounce back from you know it's funny that you said you're not gonna die i you you say so many things that just make me giggle because i one of our funny things in our house is um you know, Sean will be like mur, 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 about the kids. And I'm like, they're not going to die. Like, it's going to be fine. Like, there's no point in making this a thing. Like, just go and do it. Let them be. We'll learn from it. And then we'll go on. And that's life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, did you die? Can you die? No. Great. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. You might bleed a little, but you'll be all very right. like, okay. you heal. You yeah. mean? Like, it's, it's okay. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thanks for this very, um, informative and beautiful starry conversation with me i really appreciated it yeah it was so fun and it was really nice to just jam and chat yeah as, you know and a little bit less of a formal and and i haven't told some of those stories ever on podcasts so amazing so yeah it was really fun to just be real and and hang out so thanks I'm for having glad. me yeah no problem thank you